Welcome to Dominate Dreamweaver Module 6 CSS Menu, where we'll take a simple unordered list of links like this and turn it into an interactive menu featuring rollover buttons like this, all with the magic of CSS. We'll begin in Dreamweaver with an unordered list of links which I've created in the header of my document. We'll begin by giving an ID to that list so that we can direct styles specifically at the list and nowhere else on our page. To give an ID to the list, I click within the list, and then in the status bar, I click the UL or unordered list tag to select the entire list. Then in the HTML tab of the properties inspector, I'll type in the name list menu and hit return. Our list now has a name and we can begin making styles for that list. With the list still selected in design view, in the CSS styles palette, I'll select the mystyles.css style sheet. With that selected, any new style I create will be added to the end of that style sheet. From the contextual menu in the CSS styles palette, I'll click new to create a new style and in the new CSS rule dialog, I'll select ID for my selector type. And in the selector name field, I'll type in list menu, the name of our list. Again, I'm making this style rule in the mystyles.css style palette. I'll click OK. In the CSS rule definition dialog, in the type category, I'll set the font size to 0.8m to make the type a bit smaller than our body type. In the block category, I'll set the text align to center to center all the text within our list. And in the box category, I'll set the width to 960 pixels, which matches the width of our layout. And in padding, I'm going to set all the paddings and all the margins to zero to clear out any default padding and margin that the browser provides. Finally, in the list category, I'm going to set the list type to none to get rid of the bullet points in front of our list, and I'll say OK. Notice how our list is centered and lost the bullet points. Now I want to make a style for the list items within our list, so I'll just put the cursor within one of those items. Again, in the style palette, I'll select mystyles.css and new from the pop-up menu. This time, I want a compound style. Dreamweaver offers us some options that are a little more specific than I care to use. So I'll just hit the less specific button until I'm down to list menu LIA. We don't need the style for the link yet. That will come later, so I'll delete the A, make sure again I'm in mystyles.css, and click OK. This time in the rule definition, in the box category, I'm going to set the width of my list items to 20%. I have five items, so 20% means they'll spread evenly across the 960 pixels of our menu. I'm also going to set the float to left which will allow our menu items to line up horizontally rather than vertically. And I'm going to once again zero out the margin and paddings and click OK. Notice now that our menu has strung out across the page. We're not there yet, but it's progress. Now it's time to create a style for the actual links within our menu. This is where the links start looking like buttons. It's a fairly complex style. We'll begin by making sure the selection is within one of our links, making sure that we have the mystyles.css style sheet selected, and choosing new from the CSS pop-up menu. Once again, we want a compound style. Dreamweaver offers us a selection, which is once again a little more specific than we need. So we'll cut it down until we have just list menu LIA. That'll cover the links within our menu. So we'll make sure we're in the mystyles.css style sheet and click OK. Now, under type, we'll set the color of our links 
to black. And under style decoration, we'll choose none. That'll get rid of the underline that normally appears under links. In the background category, we'll set the background color to number sign CD5, a light green. In the border category, we'll set the style to solid for all top, right, bottom, and left sides, and the width to one pixel for all sides. We'll uncheck same for, same for all under color, and we'll make the top and left borders white. For the right border, we'll select a middle gray 666, and we'll use that for the bottom as well. What we're doing is creating a sort of 3D effect using the borders. Now, under the block category, jumping back up here, I'll set the display to block. This will cause our links to act like a rectangular block as opposed to just simply a chunk of text. And finally, under the bo box category, I'm going to set uncheck same for all and set the padding top and bottom to six pixels. We'll let the padding and the size of our type determine the height of our menu. And finally, I click OK. Now our links are starting to look like buttons, even if they don't act like them yet. We'll fix that in a moment, but first we're going to change the color of our links in the visited state. We'll begin by making sure we've selected in one of the links, choosing mystyles.css in the Styles palette, and New from the pop-up menu. Once again, we're making a compound style, and we'll get it less specific until we have list menu li a. A is the link. And after the A, we'll put a colon and the word visited. Visited is a pseudo selector. It applies only to the visited state of the link, not to the link in all cases. Once again, we're in mystyles.css. We'll say OK. And in the type category, we'll set the color to number sign 670, a dark green and say OK. Since that applies only to visited links, we won't see any effect until we preview in a browser. So let's move on and now change the hover state, which will actually make our buttons behave like buttons. With the selection still in one of the links and mystyles.css selected, we'll create a new style, once again compound, make it less specific till we're down to our link, and this time we'll use the hover pseudo style. In mystyles.css, we can click OK, and in the type property area, we'll choose white for the color, and under background, we'll set the background color to our dark green number 670, and click OK. The hover style we just created does something kind of neat. So let's click the Live View button so we can see an active version of our page and scroll over our menu. Now our buttons are actually behaving like menus. Let's click Live View again to go back to Design View and make one final style. This time we'll define the active state of our link or its state when it's actually being clicked upon. You know the routine. Insertion point in one of the links mystyles.css selected, new style, compound, less specific, and after the A, we'll add the active pseudo selector. mystyles.css, OK. And in the rule definition dialog, in the border category, we want solid for the style one pixel for the width. We'll uncheck same for all under color and we'll set the top and left 
sides to a dark gray and the right and bottom sides to a light gray. Essentially, we're reversing the light and dark borders that we created in our main link style. Click OK. Once again, we can't see these results in Dreamweaver unless we use Live View, so let's switch to Live View. And now, when we actually click, and I'm clicking and holding down now, you see that the button looks like it's being depressed, sort of 3D effect. I'm going to end by pointing out a very important point about the link styles we just created. In the Styles palette, I'm going to scroll down so I can see the styles we just created. You'll notice the link style is quite complex. However, the visited style has only one property. The properties that aren't declared in the visited style are picked up from the main link style. The same applies to hover and active. And it's very important that these styles appear in the order they're listed here. The main link style, the visited style, the hover style, and the active style. If the order is reversed or mixed up, you'll get very unexpected results. Although it's not a terrible problem because if the order was confused, you could simply drag the styles to reorder them. And that's all it takes to turn an unordered list into a CSS-based menu. Thanks. See you next time.